I think there's two kind of big subjects that we I think we should kind of cover yeah. separately. Yeah. But two very big subjects that we need to cover for moving forward. And one I think would be white privilege. Mm-hmm. So and the other would be kind of like this Black Lives Matter movement that's come out of this and like why we're protesting. But yeah. maybe right now because we're kind of talking about this Taylor Swift idea. <laughs> let's, let's talk white let's privilege talk for white sure. White privilege because I think a lot of people don't think that it's real. I was one of those people when I first heard the term white privilege. I said, "Well, I'm an, I'm a free American just like just like this guy is. How do I have any more privilege than than this black guy next to me?" Um, but so yeah, explain what white privilege is and how it's real and how it's perpetuated. And also, like yeah. you can even t- talk about like how uh, other white people benefit from it without even knowing it. Yeah, uh, we benefit from it all the time. Just being married to my husband George, um, <laughs> this is something I will see all of the time um, at our children's old school. Whenever my kids would forget their lunch, which we're the parents that forget our kids lunch. Um, I could run to the school and there was never a problem with me taking it to their classroom ever or taking it into the cafeteria ever. Uh, One time I was unavailable to do said run uh, of forgotten lunch and George did it and they would not let him back. Same entrance lady. So you could say, oh, well, maybe it was a different day. Maybe they changed the rules the day before that happened. Maybe she's had a bad experience because the last dad she let back stay too long. I don't really care, but like those kind of things happen every day. Because you can always like, chalk it up to a, oh, it was the, oh, yeah. but blah, blah, it's blah. Always blah. A flu. It's always a coincidence, day, whatever. Every day, I do not know of a single black person in America that I am friends with or related to that would say, I feel safe everywhere I go. <laughs> That is white privilege. They don't feel necessarily safe in Target or in Kroger in their own neighborhoods. I got I got some white privilege I'll shed. The other day, I was um, out with Jalila. We were driving around. We ended up on this gravel road next to some railroad cars. And some, like, undercover, like, police officer, like, flipped on his lights and pulled me over. And uh, d- this person was wearing, like, street clothes, like, no badge, like, nothing. The cop was? Yeah. Or what I thought, I didn't know what it was. Uh, and that was my thing. I started questioning him. He goes, show me your ID. I said, I don't know who you are. He goes, show me your ID right now. I said, I don't know who you are. Who are you? Who do you work for? What's your jurors? I literally just started giving him the beans and he got more and more mad and more and more mad. And he called the actual APD and the APD came and luckily it was a black police officer. And she goes, what's the deal? And I go, I really don't know. I'm just asking like, who is he? It's a random black unmarked car with blinky lights. He's in street clothes. There's no badge. There's no nothing. I don't know who he is. Like, who could, who would this possibly be? And I remember she mumbled under her breath, lucky you're white, and just, like, turned around and walked away. And I remember thinking in that moment, like, oh, yeah, I would have been yeah. ripped out of this car and bludgeoned and potentially shot just for saying, who are you? What authority do you have? Why are you pulling me over? I don't need to show you my ID. You know, the fact that I could basically backtalk a cop, which I found out it was actually a federal officer, <laughs> not just a cop. It was someone who had been, it's like a government federal officer who had been contracted by like Norfolk Southern to protect, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars of very nice merchandise that were on these trains. And here I am just running my mouth. That's white privilege, if anything. Yeah. And our whole, our whole lives have been built around it to support us and to help us get ahead. And we don't even realize it. One of them is education. Um, I like mentioned it a second ago, but one of the policies that has got to change in America is that ta- the housing tax that we all pay is what funds our schools and our education. And that has got to change. There Wasn't is that a strategic through dis- segregation? Like that was strategic. Like they intentionally segregated. Yeah. Like they drew lines in Atlanta. There red are streets. There They're are literally called streets. Redlining. You can look up redlining yeah. no matter who you are, and it will tell you. There's redlining. literally streets. You're <laughs> driving down one street, and it's like white neighborhood, white neighborhood, white neighborhood, and then all of a sudden there's one line, and then the road name changes. You're on the same road, and then all of a sudden, boom, you're in a black neighborhood, and you're like, mm-hmm. wait, 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 what just happened? Here? Hope you enjoyed that clip. If you'd like to see the full episode, click right here. If you'd like to subscribe, click here. If you'd like more clips, we got two more right over here.